So hello and welcome to the video. I'm in Dublin this morning, another early one, and I'm about to fly with Aer Lingus back across to London Heathrow in economy class. This is the first leg of a much longer booking I made with Virgin Atlantic, starting from Dublin as an ex-EU itinerary with the first flights to connect with Virgin in London on Aer Lingus. Now, Aer Lingus didn't seem to know too much about the booking. It's been quite a challenge to get seat reservations or to understand much about this flight at all. It's in economy class, even though I believe we'll be traveling on an Airbus A321, which will have Aer Lingus's medium haul lie flat seats aboard. I haven't been able to get access to those because my booking is only in economy, notwithstanding it's a business itinerary that I purchased. So when I get to the airport, I'll find out if I can inveigle my way up front of the aircraft. I probably won't be able to, but let's see. I'm not sure how interesting a video about a one hour flight in economy class on Aer Lingus is going to be, but if you'd like to find out with me, stick around. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've traveled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over a hundred countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So hit subscribe to see where I go next and perhaps get some inspiration for your next trip. My flight was scheduled for 6.40 a.m. so I flew to Dublin the night before and stayed at the Radisson Blue Hotel at the airport. It is at the airport but it's still a 7 to 10 minute walk from the terminals which is something to bear in mind when planning a stay although there is also a courtesy bus. A perfectly pleasant property that I'd happily stay at again. Virgin's system didn't share the booking reference created for the Aer Lingus flights, so I'd not been able to select seats through either Virgin or Aer Lingus. Eventually I did glean my Aer Lingus booking reference, but that required a lengthy web chat with the Aer Lingus help desk. I'd only persevered as I wanted to guarantee a window seat to be able to film the views. So I headed for the business class check-in to try and untangle things. I asked if I could get a seat in the lie flat area of the plane and the agent did indeed give me a seat further forwards, although as it turned out not far enough forward to get me into that front cabin. She also gave me a boarding pass for my Virgin flight to the USA. Stringent entry requirements for the US prevailed at the time and as the boarding pass was issued without any of the necessary documents being inspected I was sceptical that it would work and sure enough it didn't. As I only had an economy class seat, I wasn't confident of being able to use the fast track lane, but the regular lane looked pretty quiet, so I didn't risk the embarrassment of rejection. Dublin Airport is actually quite busy at that time of the morning, with lots of flights leaving between 6 and 7am, but I was still through security pretty quickly. I had a similar concern about being able to access the lounge. I had a business class ticket and also have gold status with Virgin and BA, so I was optimistic that something would get me in, but as time was short and the lounge was in the opposite direction to the gate, once again I decided not to risk the shame of being denied entry. Dublin Airport is very pleasant, but it is quite large and by the time I'd strolled to the gate it was pretty much time to board. Aer Lingus doesn't sell its business cabin on these flights, I assume because they can't guarantee that the equipment that ends up operating flights will have the seats that have been promised. If I were Aer Lingus's finance director, I'd like to think I'd find a way of monetizing this cabin, but I'm not Aer Lingus's finance director and I doubt I ever will be. So this was the business cabin, with someone sitting in it too. Hey ho! So the economy class seat. Not brilliant legroom, 31 inches allegedly, probably about right, although it was a little tight and as this A321 services the east coast of the US, the legroom would be really tight on a transatlantic flight. A table and because of those mid-haul services, a very respectable entertainment screen. Even better, the in-flight entertainment was operational on this one hour flight to London. in-seat power and on-board Wi-Fi too. Pretty much everything you might want on a lengthy flight, let alone a short European hop. Hey, they have even invested in personal air vents. It was still dark when we took off, but I need some footage to cover this next bit, so here it is. It's great to be able to start a Virgin itinerary from Dublin, and it unlocks a very good price, as I discussed in my review of Virgin's transatlantic flight. 
but the experience is not exactly joined up and it is a bit annoying. The flight doesn't seem to have earned anything into my Virgin Flying Club and even though I was able to attach my BA Executive Club number to the flight, it hasn't earned anything over there either. Virgin did also offer connecting options from Dublin on BA, which does book into BA's business cabin, although that option wasn't available with the onward flight I wanted to take. None of this is Aer Lingus's fault, and the flying experience with them was very good, but be prepared for some oddities if you book a Virgin itinerary ex Dublin. Shortly after takeoff, there was a very odd announcement. I wasn't filming at the time, so I can't report it fully, but it warned against any filming of Aer Lingus crew or operating processes. I don't know whether this is a routine announcement. Let me know in the comments if it is. But as my camera was visible when I boarded, it may have been made specifically for me. If it was, it's oddly flattering in some ways. I've not heard anything similar on any other airline I've flown, certainly not since I've had this channel, but I think it's completely counterproductive. It makes Aer Lingus sound defensive, almost ashamed about having people share their offering, which is daft, as their experience is actually pretty good. Nevertheless, I will respect the intent of the announcement and won't show any elements of their in-flight experience. So after about an hour, we landed, and here's some footage of that. I didn't film it, but a trolley did pass through the cabin offering drinks and breakfasts. They said a menu was available via the entertainment screens, although nothing was there. Perhaps unsurprisingly, because of that, nobody bought anything. I also checked out the Wi-Fi, which I thought was fairly pricey for the data packages offered. This flight was part of a much larger itinerary, which I will be covering flight by flight on the channel in coming weeks. Allocating that fare to individual flights based on the mileage flown suggests that this flight cost me £43, which is probably a very reasonable price to have paid. It would have been nice for Aer Lingus to have recognised the bigger picture behind the booking in a way that gave me a comfier seat up front, but as I said, I think that's more Virgin's problem than Aer Lingus's. I didn't film my exit from the plane, but here's that boarding footage again, in reverse. At the start I wondered whether this would make for an interesting video. I think it did. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. And now a rarity for the channel, an outro filmed to camera. So that was Aer Lingus. Very good flight, wonderful plane, comfortable seat, spotlessly clean. What more could you want for a one hour flight? So thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Off to my next flight now. It should be quite exciting and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.